गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी आई वेलकम यू ऑल बैक फॉर द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ इको सिस्टम इन फर्स्ट पार्ट वी डिड द इंट्रो ऑफ इको सिस्टम एंड देन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इको सिस्टम एंड आफ्टर दैट वी मूव टू द फूड चेन एंड फूड वेब्स सो नाउ टूडे आई एम डूइंग द बायो जियो केमिकल साइक्लिंग बिकॉज येस्टरडे आई लेफ्ट Till food web. So I already told you that ecosystem is very important, the theory point of view, and also from the competitive point of view. So kindly refresh your knowledge time to time. And here I want to mention that you have done exceptionally well in the posters and. dry flower arrangement and the results are already uploaded the competition is fought intensively a tough competition judges having a hard time to get the winners those who don't make up to the point please do not dishearten participation matters prizes will come today it will come tomorrow you have a chance very soon that is posters of one mahotsav and slogan we are getting good response but 100% participation is required i every time says ek chhota तो सुरक्षा चक्र टूटा सो प्लीज ऑल पार्टिसिपेट आई वॉन्ट टू गेट हिडन टैलेंट आउट ऑफ यू एक्सिलेंट टैलेंट यू हैव एंड दीज ऑनलाइन कॉम्पिटिशन नॉट इंक्रीज और मोटिवेट यू बट ऑल्सो हैव ग्रेट इंपैक्ट ऑन योर पर्सनैलिटी पर्सनैलिटी डेवलपमेंट इज वन एस्पेक्ट which is required when you face the interviews so remain indoors remain safe i will be right back stay on good morning everybody i welcome you all back and today before starting the bio geo chemical cycle i will revise you the structure of ecosystem here the solar energy is converted into chemical energy by means of producers and these producers they are also called transducers or converters having trophic level t1 and these producers they are in turn eaten by the consumers and this process of eating and re-eaten is called food chain and then they are by the decomposers as i already told you trophic level producers is t1 they are taken by the herbivores t2 primary herbivores are also called here primary consumers then primary carnivores t3 secondary carnivore t4 and top carnivore t5 from t1 to t5 these are called grassland food chain whereas the t6 is called detritus food chain which we did yesterday and these t4 t4 5 they are the predators predators so these you should you know so ecosystem biotic components abiotic components biotic components and abiotic we have from abiotic recycling of matter which we are doing today bio geochemical cycle biotic components is producers consumers micro consumers called decomposers and flow of energy in which the flow of energy we will do subsequently day after tomorrow so the and this two parts the food chain and food web we did so today i am starting the uh, bio geo chemical cycle so bio geo chemical cycle when we breaks it is the bio means organisms geo means soil and chemical means elements so the movement of those uh, the circular pathway of chemical elements from environment to organism and back to environment is called bio geo chemical cycle the most important bio geo chemical cycles include the carbon cycle nitrogen cycle and oxygen cycle besides water cycle the nutrient cycle is generally classified into two pools 
the reservoir pool it is large slow moving and gradually non biological component and the second is the the cycling pool it is the small and there is rapid change of chemical elements between the environment and the large slow moving non biological and unavailable pool so this is uh, now we are coming to uh, nitrogen cycle before uh, just moving on to nitrogen cycle i just want to show you the uh, biogeochemical cycle see this is the biogeochemical cycle uh, the diagram we have and in this uh, we have one that is this stripped circle and this stripped circle is superimposed upon the this flow simplified energy flow diagram which we are doing day before uh, tomorrow so uh, this uh, these are the autotrophs and these are the heterotrophs and this circulation of nutrients from atmosphere soil to atmosphere and back to the soil and this stripped circle is called uh, biogeochemical cycle and it has uh, uh, two part one is the i already told you one big reservoir pool and the small that is the uh, nutrient pool so uh, we already explained that reservoir pool is a large slow moving and generally non biological component so reservoir pool means like atmosphere whereas the cycling pool it is small and there is a rapid change of chemical elements between the environment and the large environment and the organism here the chemicals are held for only short period of time right so uh, we have two that is the uh, reservoir pool and cycling pool right so reservoir pool is big one and the cycling pool is the smaller one and reservoir pool is like said atmosphere and this we have the cycling nutrients right and where it we have the nutrient pool right so now we are coming to the uh, i already told you uh, the large reservoir pool is uh, unavailable form whereas the cycling pool is the available form between the autotrophs and heterotrophs that is from soil to atmosphere and back then uh, the biogeochemical cycle are divided into the uh, hydrological type in this type the reservoir pool is water water cycle we did lot of time gaseous type in this the reservoir pool is the air reservoir i already told you and this reservoir pool is large slow moving and generally non biological component like atmosphere i already uh, said then sedimentary in this type the reservoir pool is deep sediments that is basically the uh, crust of the earth in it comes the phosphorus right so biogeochemical cycle is superimposed i just told you on a simple energy flow diagram contrasting the cycling of material with the flow of energy a small cycling portion is termed the available or exchange pool which is stripped i just show you going in the stripped circle from autotrophs to heterotrophs and back where is a box at the top labeled reservoir pool it is uh, large slow moving and non biological and unavailable pool again see this is the uh, cyclic nutrients this one and this box this uh, box at the top it represents the uh, reservoir pool right it is large slow moving and non biological and unavailable pool so this uh, we finishes the uh, basics of biogeochemical cycle now we are coming to the uh, nitrogen cycle nitrogen cycle is the first cycle i already told you it is a gaseous cycle and uh, we have in syllabus both gases that is nitrogen carbon besides the water cycle that is hydrogen nitrogen cycle is gaseous type of uh, biogeochemical cycle and nitrogen being part or required for synthesis of amino acids i already explained to you amino acids uh, two amino acid will form dipeptide and n will form polypeptide that is proteins and then we have nucleic acids and chlorophyll molecules so nitrogen is essential for our uh, body and uh, biological processes the atmosphere with 78% of nitrogen is the greatest reservoir so nitrogen cycle consists of following steps first is the 
nitrogen fixation so i just here want to tell you so nitrogen fixation is two type basically physical and biological first it is the process of conversion of molecular nitrogen that is 78% nitrogen in atmosphere into nitrogenous compounds on the basis of agency through which nitrogen is fixed the nitrogen fixation is uh, divided into the two types right as i already told you first is the uh, physical nitrogen fixation and in the presence of lightning uv rays oxygen combines with atmospheric nitrogen because oxygen is 21% and nitrogen is 78 to form nitric oxide see nitrogen and oxygen they combine to form nitric oxide and uh, this nitric oxide again oxidized to form nitrogen dioxide and then to form peroxide so nitrogen peroxide can combine with the water during rains to form a nitrous and nitric acid and which falls on ground and ground is rich in calcium and magnesium and this calcium and magnesium combines with the uh, nitrate to form calcium nitrate and magnesium nitrates so here it is very important to mention that plants they absorb nitrogen only in form of nitrates so these plants they are in turn eaten by the animals right so now we are coming to the cycle here i already told you atmosphere is the reservoir right here nitrogen in atmosphere is 78 and oxygen is 21 and they both combine under electric discharge so they form nitrous oxide and this nitrous oxide combines with the it oxidized with the nascent oxygen it form nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen dioxide when with the rainfall it falls in form of hno3 like see rainfall and at soil it breaks into h positive and no3 in soil they represent calcium and magnesium and it will form calcium nitrate or magnesium nitrate it is absorbed by the plants the plants absorb nitrogen only in the form of nitrate ions and the plants are eaten by animals and then death and decay of both or excreta of the animals is acted upon by the decomposers right this we will do later on so now i am coming to the second part that is the biological fixation the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into organic or inorganic soluble forms through the agency of living organism is called biological nitrogen fixation which is also called bnf so it is two types asymbiotic biological nitrogen fixation there are number of aerobic and anaerobic anaerobic soil bacteria or blue green algae which fixes nitrogen first free living aerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria these are here example will come and this question will come which of the following is the free living aerobic nitrogen you have to take azotobacter or basidiorica and then free living photosynthetic bacteria chlorobium it is easy anaerobic is the clostridium right i remember that aerobic i remember from the indian captain azruddin azu azu we say so azu is living is captain of indian cricket team that is azotobacter and then uh, anaerobic is clostridium and then free living chemosynthetic bacteria is desulfur vibrio and heterocyst bearing vibrio we, we did in algae in alumina and nostoc and the b part is the symbiotic nitrogen fixation all those fixation which where two organisms live together symbiotically it is a following types first is the uh, leguminous plants the leguminous plants you know in leguminous plants we have the roots and in roots we have the these nodules and here a nitrogen cycle will occur so uh, they have nodule which harbor bacteria rhizobium and which fixes uh, the organic carbon and supply nitrogen to the host plant it is symbiotic because uh, bacteria fixes nitrogen and the plant will provide shelter in these nodules so symbiotic nitrogen fixation in non leguminous plants first there are many non leguminous plants which fixes nitrogen in the nodules there a lot of question comes in is so uh, you have to take the option option may be there in alnus in association with frankia myrica in association with frankia the frankia is both so it is very easy to uh, if frankia is there you have to see alnus or my myrica is there or not casuarina equisitifolia casuarina equisitifolia is in our botanical garden a large biggest tree in our garden is called casuarina equisitifolia and i have want to tell it looks like a pinus but it is not pinus it is not gymnosperm it is angiosperm because it has nodes and internodes in it uh, in association with the frankia frankia again games so uh, nitrogen fixation through non nodulation which are example of non nodulation we did 
when we do, did the bryophytes, please refer to that video. Anthocerops in association with the nostoc. Cycus corallite roots when we did the gymnosperms in association with the anabina. And the lichens in association with the algae and fungi. The first year we did it. Right? So this way finishes the symbiotic and asymbiotic. And the next uh, second step in nitrogen cycle is the nitrogen assimilation where I stopped. So I told you that plants absorb uh, nitrogen in form of nitrates and they are eaten by the animals. Both death and decay or excreta are acted upon the decomposer which are on the trophic level T6 and they undergo ammonification, right? And it will form ammonia. Now we are coming to the assimilation. Plants can absorb nitrates from the soil while they root hairs to produce organic compounds of nitrogen. Nitrate is the first of all reduced to ammonia which combines with the organic compounds to form amino acids and I already told you amino acids will form proteins. They are synthesis of proteins, enzymes, nucleic acid, chlorophyll. So animals being heterotrophic are dependent upon the plant proteins to obtain their organic matter. The plant proteins are broken down into amino acid with the help used which is used by the animals to make their own proteins and nucleic acids. So uh, basics are the plant proteins and animal proteins they are formed on the uh, plant proteins disintegration. Now ammonification, when plant or animals dies or animal expel waste, the initial form of nitrogen is organic. Bacteria that is bacillus species, fungi, they convert the organic nitrogen into the ammonium. A process is called ammonification or mineralization. Right, this one, ammonification or mineralization. So ammonia in the presence of nitrosomonas or penicillium or aspergillus changes into the nitrite, and nitrite in presence of nitrobacter and uh, aspergillus or penicillium changes into the nitrate. And this process is called nitrification, which we are doing the next. So before that, uh, the ammonium ions I want to tell you, as you see, they are positively charged. And they uh, are stick to the negatively charged soil particles. I already we did in, uh, during ecology that uh, these clay particles are negatively charged with organic matter, and an interaction between them prevents the ammonium ion being leached out. There is an interaction which does not allow the ammonium ions to leach out. The next step I already explained is nitrification, the conversion of ammonia to nitrites to nitrates by process of oxidation. And the common group of uh, bacteria are nitrosomonas, nitrococcus, nitrobacter, which are used besides the fungi, aspergillus, and uh, penicillium. Ammonia, first in the presence of nitrosomonas and nitrococcus, change into the nitrite. And the nitrites are changed to nitrates by penicillium, aspergillus, or nitrobacter. And these nitrates are the form in which the plants they absorb nitrogen. In other words, ammonia produced by decomposition is converted to nitrates by a process called nitrification so this uh, we finishes the cycle this one part physical we fix and this we fix and nitrate comes and these nitrates they are directly absorbed by the plants and they are also gone back to the atmosphere by a process called denitrification so denitrification occurs by means of two bacteria that is uh, thiobacillus denitrificans or we can call it pseudomonas denitrificans so last part is the denitrification. So denitrification under anaerobic conditions, the nitrates get reduced to nitrogen that is by pseudomonas denitrification, nitrificans or thiobacillus denitrificans. Gases form of nitrogen escapes to the atmosphere. So this way finishes the nitrogen cycle. I already told you excellent cycle. So don't go through any book. This cycle is lot times replicated and it is an easy cycle to understand and easy to get the good marks right now i am coming to the next cycle that is the carbon cycle as i already told you carbon cycle is also a gaseous cycle carbon containing parts of earth its atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere are collectively called carbon sphere so uh, the reservoir pool air are uh, either lithosphere or hydrosphere and it is collectively called carbon sphere C. The reservoir pool of carbon dioxide is uh, it is a atmosphere, hydrosphere or lithosphere and it is called basically 
to together called carbonosphere right uh, about 60 million metric tons of carbon is annually assimilated or converted into organic matter through the process of photosynthesis 60 billion ton metric tons even though large quantity of inorganic carbon is with, withdrawn from the abiotic environment for photosynthesis the atmosphere and hydrospheres do not get depleted of their carbon content because of return through two major process so you will see here the uh, basically uh, the carbon dioxide in atmosphere they are taken by the photosynthetic plants but uh, nowadays uh, global warming occurring due to the carbon dioxide which is a main culprit i already explained during pollution that is 55% of carbon dioxide uh, uh, plays a role in the greenhouse gases so uh, despite the fact it is used in the photosynthesis it is coming back to the atmosphere through the lot of processes i will explain you right now one is the respiration right so now the first process is the biological respiration of various organisms and decomposition of organic matter right methane is a common gas produced during decomposition in marshes fields that is i already told you rice fields so question if comes in is from rice field which gas is Uh, released it is uh, methane methane take uh, rice take uh, methane from the side uh, soil it accumulate in it and release into the atmosphere right so uh, it escapes into the atmosphere where it ultimately change into the carbon dioxide besides that uh, methane is also forming 8% of uh, global greenhouse gases but methane is more dangerous than carbon dioxide besides that it convert into carbon dioxide but it can absorb infrared rays eight times more than that of carbon so we can if it is it from 8% so it is basically indirectly 64% uh, causing damage to the atmosphere so now we are coming to the second part that is the non biological so combustion of fossil fuel adds to 6 billion tons of carbon to the atmosphere use of fossil fuel we are using every day i already explained you uh, when i doing the photochemical shock the when we uh, start the car in the morning nitrogen and oxygen come out nitrous oxide and ultimately that combines with the olefins which are hydrocarbons released from the car and then it combines with the ozone uh, first form aldehyde and ketone then uh, combines with the ozone to form a pan which is secondary pollutant and uh, ozone which is uh, born uh, in stratosphere is been in the troposphere and is a pollutant it is also a secondary pollutant because oxygen combined with next and oxygen form ozone please refer to the videos of pollution and do that right so now uh, the use of fossil increase day by day and hence carbon dioxide content for atmosphere increase by 10% in last 12.5 years other sources of increasing carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere are volcanic eruptions hot springs weathering of carbonate rocks also increase carbon dioxide of 100 million tons in atmosphere some quality of carbon dioxide is being regularly taken out of cycling pool and added to the reservoir pool right so uh, we will understand here we know that these form carbonosphere and major is uh, uh, carbon dioxide is sink in photosynthesis but it is not decreasing it is coming back by two main processes that is respiration and direct combustion right so uh, air producers are eaten by herbivores and herbivores they do respiration producer they do respiration so uh, then herbivores are eaten by the uh, next consumers they do respiration so uh, they also all accumulate to the reservoir pool besides that the non uh, biological are the these uh, chemical combination then coal petroleum natural glass, uh, gas gas carbonate rocks and besides that the volcanic activity hot springs they are the non biological which add 6 billion tons of carbon to the atmosphere right so uh, the last part is the formation of shells and carbonaceous skeleton and formation of and sedimentation of carbonate rocks at the bottom of sea and ultimately the fossilization of organic remains and seepage of carbon and rich water into the interior of earth here i want to explain you suppose uh, there is a one uh, tortoise and uh, carbon we fix on its shell and this sinks down or died and goes to the bottom right 
so that that carbon is lost but that is not lost for uh, lost for some years but not for many years and then turtle will go on increasing and this comes out in form of right uh, corals so uh, when uh, these uh, i also told the sedimentation of carbonate rocks at the bottom of the sea right then they come in form of carbonate rocks are they are eaten by the taken from here by the fish eating birds or oh, sorry uh, uh, from the uh, uh, carbonate uh, the coral reefs and they are taken by the birds and uh, it comes into the uh, or by means of the volcanic eruptions or hot springs it comes back into the atmosphere so these are the basically uh, two cycles we did that is one is the uh, carbon dioxide right and the second is the nitrogen cycle right one we left with the hydrogen cycle which we did a lot of times that uh, in uh, water which accumulated in the ponds and evaporation occurs and where forest it is not uh, 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 transpiration but in forest ponds are also there so forest we the collective vapor transpiration and it goes above and it form clouds and clouds the condensation will occur and they will come at precipitation form downwards and this is called hydrogen cycle this you will do yourself no uh, problem in it so please uh, revise those so uh, i also tell you the structure we did then we did biotic abiotic then cycling of matter today biogeochemical cycle we did food chain and food web we did and now uh, uh, tomorrow i will go the ecological pyramids using these trophic levels and then subsequently the uh, flow of energy energy flow in ecosystem so please uh, stay indoor stay safe and revise these cycles they are easy cycles don't uh, follow any book just uh, write down from here and particularly for the bsc 2 who are coming into bsc 3 this is for them right i'm doing all this hard work just for them so that because classes when it will start it hardly matters you will start your pollution and ecosystem right now because on january 14 which i am doing the uh, mock online test the 10 to 15 in question comes from this so bsc two people have to attempt whole paper not to particular b i will i am bsc two so i don't uh, listen to the those uh, excuses you can uh, uh, attempt these question of ecosystem and pollution i told you already 10 question will come from here not for uh, in the oct but in is and ifs also these questions from ecosystem and uh, pollution will come because they will form a part of ecology right uh, take care stay indoors stay safe i will be right back tomorrow bye bye